Hello my lovelies, it is time for another vlog, so stay tuned. So we are still here on our cruise from Rome on the MSC World Europa and today we are in Barcelona. However, we decided not to get off the boat because we just kind of needed to rest and recover a little bit. Uh, but we also have a photo shoot today. We're going to do like um, not just the ones that they have set up around the ship. We're actually going to have a photographer take us around the ship to certain places and get some cool pictures done. And got cute props for Snicker and things like that. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're getting ready to go do. It's going to be fun. I thought I'd take you along. Yesterday was a sea day and we really didn't do anything. Um, we went to the casino, lost a bunch of money. <laughs> but other than that, nothing really. And not really much else today except for this photo shoot. Okay, so we just got back to our room from doing a little photo shoot. It was a lot of fun, and I think some of the pictures are going to turn out really good. But uh, I just walked out here on our balcony because the view is so cute. Hold on. We've got this cute little lighthouse and the sailboats, and it's just adorable. It's so nice. And then... 
the city is right over there. Okay, so now we are going to get ready for dinner. Snicker is just chilling here on his little potty area. This, he hasn't potty on this one at all. He uses this one as more like a just to hang out on the balcony area. They have another one um, on deck seven for him to use, and that's the one that he actually uses. I think he gets afraid to use it with the water and stuff moving by. Okay, off to dinner. Good morning. Today we are in Marseille, France. And uh, we don't have any excursions booked for here. So the plan is we're going to just get off. We're going to take a shuttle to the city center, which is called Old Port, and walk around and explore. So our shuttle um, to go from the ship to Old Port was super late. We waited for a long time. And then, unfortunately, once a shuttle did finally show up, they said um, Snigger could not get on. Even even though he's a service dog, they said no. It really stinks. So Marty actually took Snicker back to the room, and Xander and I are gonna go out and spend a little bit of time before we have to get back to the boat. Not a lot of time though, unfortunately. It is Sunday, February 25th, and we are in Genoa, Italy. And let me show you this view. How pretty. The jingle jangling you hear is Mr. Snicker here. We are up where his little potty is. So we have an excursion today and it is a full day excursion. We are going to a couple of different towns in the um, Italian Riviera, which is very cool. We're gonna learn about some culture. We're gonna go to a little fishing village and we're gonna have a couple hours in each place. I think there's like a walking tour. It's a full day thing, so that'll be fun. And uh, we've already confirmed that Snicker can go with us. Um, the excursion people checked in on that yesterday and told us they would just refund us the excursion if it doesn't work. Uh, but yeah, it should, everything should be fine. Looking forward to it. We're already working on planning uh, tomorrow, like getting from the pier to our hotel. But I think we're gonna do some fun tour thing. In the meantime, we're gonna do like a private tour that picks us up from the, the cruise port and takes us um, on a tour before dropping us off at our hotel. I'm excited, it's gonna be fun. Uh, but that actually will be on my next vlog because today will be the last day for this vlog. But lots of fun stuff for today. So let's go check out the Italian Riviera. To walk a lot in the second village. I will do there, we get off. We will do together a short, I say always to my guests, try maybe a gastronomic snack there. That is a specialty. And this is the focaccia. The focaccia, this is a flat oven backed bread. The main focaccia, the plain focaccia, the most eaten one is only topped with olive oil 
and cause assault. But there's the possibility to buy focaccias topped with onions. I don't speak about some slices of onions, really a mountain of onions. Huh? So if you like onions, the focaccia with onion is perfect for you. Focaccia topped with olives, with herbs, with cheese, tomato, and so on. But the real speciality, gastronomic speciality of Camoli is another variety of focaccia that is called the focaccia di Recco. This is really different from the other focaccia varieties because the focaccia of Recco, we speak about two thin layers of pastry enclosing a soft cheese filling. This is really delicious. I will show you the bakery in Camoli, but there are also a lot of coffee bars and most of them, if you stop there, they offer also a piece of focaccia. The focaccia is not expensive, a piece of focaccia, the price will be between uh, two euros and four euros, uh, not so much. And with the bus, we drive then to Santa Margarita Ligure. Santa Margarita Ligure, the second village, it's, um, it's bigger than the first village. There are two wonderful seaside promenades. There is the historic center. There are two shopping roads. Of course, today is Sunday. Not all the shops will be open. There are several, uh, several possibilities um, to lunch. I say always, remember that this is the territory where the gastronomic specialty is the pesto sauce. And the pesto sauce is the creamy cream sauce which we eat with the pasta, the noodles. While we are driving on the motor way on the motor road, maybe you say how many tunnels? Yes, this is the truth. This motorway was erected during the 60s, 1960s, and it's full with bridges and tunnels. Why? Because this region, Ligurian, this is one of the smallest 20 Italian regions, it's a very narrow coastal region, this region is full, is mm, mainly mountainous and hilly. We have not a lot of lowland areas. So for this reason, when they erected the motorway, they had to build so many tunnels and bridges. This is the only motorway that we have in this part of the region. We have only one coastal road, the Via Aurelian Way. This because this region is very narrow. It extends only from the sea to the mountain range that we will see always on our left hand side. The mountain range in this part of the region Ligurian, these are the Apennines mountains. Huh? And on the other side of the Apennines mountains, there is another Italian region. So our region Liguorian is really very narrow and extends from the sea to the mountain range. It's mainly hilly and mountainous this region. For this reason, if you look in front of us and also on the left hand side, on the hills we can see a lot of terrace plots. Think centuries ago Liguorian ancestors adapted the mountains to their needs by breaking the sides of the mountains into terraces. Terraces shot up by dry stone walls. This was a hard work. We have thousands and thousands of kilometers of this kind of dry stone walls in this region. And we can say the dry stone walls are a common feature in the whole region of Liguria. On the terrace plots often are cultivated olive trees. Um, the hillsides are covered by the typical Mediterranean vegetation we call this the Maquis, meaning that there are a lot of pine trees, some olive trees, 
Um, the hills are covered by evergreen shrubs, and um, rosemary and thyme are growing, growing often wild here. And we have also exotic trees here. These are, for example, lemon trees, orange trees. This is the period that the trees are full with oranges and lemons. Mm. Um, of course, we have also exotic trees because um, the weather is very mild here. The weather is very mild here, especially during the winter months meaning that normally on the coast it's not snowing and there is no frost the mountain range on the backside of the region is protecting this region from the cold northern winds today for the for the people of this region it's a very very cold day so normally it's a little bit warmer during this period Today it's a little bit cold because yesterday you know, it was raining all the day with very low temperatures. Huh? But today in the morning I hope that we will have no problem. There must be a little bit of sunshine. If you look on our right hand side, the hills are covered by olive trees. You can recognize the olive trees thanks to their silver queen foliage. The olive tree is called the immortal tree because if you cut the trunk of an olive tree, a new one will always regrow. The olives that are cultivated here are very small black olives. And of course the production of olive oil is very, very important here. Yeah. So maybe today, especially afterwards in Santa Margarita Ligure, if you say I'm looking for souvenirs, I say always the gastronomic souvenirs are the best one. Eh? So pesto sauce, torofie noodles, and the local produced olive oil. It's Reco. Reco is the name of our local focaccia variety that is called the focaccia di reco i told you we speak about two thin layers of pastry enclosing a soft cheese filling so this focaccia variety was invented here during the middle ages this because you must know that uh, during the centuries the whole coastline here was constantly attacked by men coming from the sea. Nowadays we say the pirates. Uh, and the people here, the people living in the small fishermen villages, they were very afraid of them. And when they received the notice that the pirates were attacking, they abandoned the two exposed fishermen villages, they sought refuge in uh, the hills and they took with them only little things that they could carry. So for example, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of flour and always at least one goat uh, for having the goat milk and making goat cheese. And with this little ingredients, they invented then the focaccia di Areco that is made with flour, olive oil and soft cheese. So this is record. The houses are all relatively new. Most of them are dating back to the 1950s, 1960s because during Second World War the whole historic center of this village was completely destroyed by the Allied forces because they wanted to destroy an important railway bridge here. Mm -hmm. The railway bridge survived, but the historic center of this village was completely destroyed. Fortunately, this um, didn't happen to the neighboring Kamoli. So Kamoli, the village that we will visit in afterwards, uh, it's completely intact. Uh, you will see it's very, very interesting, the s mm, very high, tall houses of the former fishermen 
so the houses are made with a lot of floors uh, stories and each one is different colored so for this reason you will see this is really fantastic oh my gosh look at the little orange trees The seaside promenade. You can continue it until the end. At the end of the seaside promenade, on the left hand side, on a wall, the thing the perfection Hey, Snigger. <laughs> hey, Marty. Hey, hey Xander. Hello. Hi, cutie. Can y'all see the rainbow? It's so pretty. It extends in front of this region until France. It extends in front of the islands of Corsica and Sardinia and um, a lot of cetaceans are living inside these waters, uh, especially dolphins, uh, spur whales, fin whales and so on. Lovely watching the little gardens about the houses. Look all the lemon trees here on the left hand side. Normally each family has in the garden at least one lemon tree. Of course, also here it's a specialty to make the lemon liquor, the limoncello. Yeah. This is the coastal road. This is the old, the former Roman road where we are driving now. The Roman road that was crossing the um, promontory in front of us in the past. The Romans, they started to build their roads to the north starting from the third century before Christ onwards. Uh, and then when they reached this part of the which Liguorian they continued westwards uh, for reaching nowadays France. So the old Roman road once was situated here, once it was crossing the promontory, there was, the street was an important um, street for trading. Starting from the mid 19th century onwards, this territory here became a um, place for rich European aristocrats who started to spend their winter months here. Look the panorama on the right hand side, the whole coastline, the huge town there, this is Genova. Uh, Genova, this is the chief town of this region that extends from more than 34 kilometers along the shore, 700,000 inhabitants. So, of course, tourism is very important for this region since the mid-19th century onwards, before only the rich European aristocrats could 
stay here during the winter months uh, because this was very expensive and then starting from the 1960s onwards uh, started the normal tourism for a lot of families mm -hmm. you must know that we have a lot of second holiday homes here because uh, the other two important Italian northern regions that of Piedmont and Lombardy are not far away from here uh, meaning that two three hours with the car wow. the people from this now northern Italian towns reach easily this coastline so for this reason uh, they started decades ago to purchase apartments, flats here, new houses were erected and these people are staying here, Italian people, especially during the summer months because for the Italians summer means sunbathing, uh, the whole day on the beach. And you must know that we have very long summer school holidays here, more than three months three months think poor parents uh, especially if you have to work with the kids at home so lucky are that families that have grandma and grandpa uh, who take the kids with them in the second holiday homes here so during the summer months there are really a lot of tourists in this part of the rich so we are always crossing the promontory. The, we passed the highest point of the promontory, the Ruta point. Uh, Ruta during the Roman period, this was a little important trading center because of course the Roman road was here. Santa Margarita Ligure the village where we will drive now. This is an important touristy site we saw. One of the pearls of the Tigulian Gulf because the part of the Mediterranean Sea where it's located, this village is called the Tigulian Gulf. It's called so because the Ligurian tribe of the Tigulias settled around this gulf first and we speak about the 12th century before Christ. And so in prehistoric times people lived around this gulf. Santa Margarita Ligure is not the only important tourist site we saw around this gulf. There's also a Rapallo. Uh, not far away from here, um, Portofino, but Portofino is a very, very small village located hidden in, on the promontory uh, and it's possible to reach it only by boat, not with this big tourist coach and I told you today there, are, there is no ferry boat um, traffic to the to the to Portofino. Santa Margarita Ligure and nearby Rapallo. So are the names of this the most important tourist site resorts here. Elegant tourist reside resorts. Um, seaside resorts. Rapallo. Maybe you heard about this village, small town, because in 1920 there was signed a famous treaty in a hotel of Rapallo, the so-called Treaty of Rapallo. This was signed secretly um, between the German and the Russians. And it, this treaty signed definitively um, First World War. So for this reason, uh, in history, uh, the, many European kids know about the Treaty of Rapallo that was signed in Rapallo nearby Santa Margarita Ligure. So we are reaching Rapallo. Look the wonderful houses on the left, on the right hand side. Most of them were erected starting from the mid 19th century onwards when this started to be an exclusive area for rich tourists, but only for staying here during the winter months.
in the past two of us arrived only during the winter months enjoying the mild climate also because let's remember that in the past a real lady of high society had to have a very white skin uh, only uh, farmers women were with the colored skin uh, for this reason uh, we hadn't summer tourism here only winter tourism the summer tourism was introduced from the 1923 onwards thanks to the first american tourists uh, they started on the nearby french riviera for staying there during the summer months sunbathing water skiing starting to drink coca-cola the people were shocked and they said also here they said what they do on the beach during the summer months but then the hotel started to open not only in winter but also during the summer months and from there onwards from there on started the <coughs> summer tourism too So as you can see, we are now off the boat and we are on our way to Rome. So I thought this would be a good place to end this video and start the next one um, where we're going to be, we're actually currently on a private tour to see all the highlights of Rome. And I'm so excited, oh my goodness. And I can't wait to show you all. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye.